Hello everybody, my name is Sherry, my dog's name is Sunny, and you are listening to Therapy Dog Talk. Each week we talk to different teams around the world about the impact that they're making in their communities, and today I'm really excited for you to meet Sarah and Seppi. If you're just getting started on your therapy dog journey, we have a free guide for you that you can find at freeguide.therapydogtalk.com, and we also have a free community you can join at community.therapydogtalk.com. I'm looking forward to today's chat and I see that our guest is in here so I will get them right in. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing well. Good. Well, it's so nice to meet you. I'm really grateful that you reached out. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice to meet you as well. So for those who don't know you, would you like to introduce yourself and your pup? Yeah. My name is Sarah. I am a licensed managed family therapist in Las Vegas, Nevada. My puppy, Seppi, is a little over a year old. She is a soft-coated Wheaton Terrier poodle mix, and I got her explicitly to train as a therapy dog to work in my mental health practice. I work primarily with trans folk, but more broadly, like LGBT people. I have a PhD in human development, so I also like do trainings, mostly right now ethics trainings for working with trans populations, but I work with a few inpatient hospitals in town and things like that. Very cool. What's the slang term for Wheaton Terriers or Wheaton Terrier doodles? They're called woodles. I was thinking that that might be it. I love it. It makes me think of like the Grinch yeah. for some reason. Like the, I know. the hoodles. It's very fun. Yeah. I think Woodle's a fun doodle name. She has mostly like Wheaton quality. So sometimes I just call her my little Wheaty, which is fun. That's great. Yeah. We had another Wheaton Terrier on here like a couple months ago. Leo, who goes to school with his human Kaylee. Wheatons are great dogs. It's funny because I worked at a pet store when I was a teenager. It was one of my first jobs. And I didn't really know much about Wheatons before that point. And then my sister was looking to get a dog around like a year, two years ago. And then when I was looking for a dog, she's like, you mentioned that we should look for a Wheaton like 35 times. I love it. <laughs> well, I was looking for a beagle and ended up with a chihuahua mix that has no beagle yeah. in her. So here we there are. Very cool. Sarah, how did you find out about the role of therapy dogs? So I have been a therapist for over a decade now. And so I had some brief training and like classes on animal assisted interventions. And so it was always in the back of my mind, but I didn't really know how to look into it. I've always loved dogs. You know, I got the job when I was a teenager for that reason. When I was a kid, I just would go to the library and get like books on dog breeds. And so when I started therapy training, it just like struck my interest, but I was like, I don't know how I can do this. And so then I had pets all my life. And my last dog, Rory, who was a toy poodle, he was a rescue. He passed away last June or not last year, and I guess now because it's 2023. But in 2021, he passed away. And so at that point, I was like, hey, what do I want to get as a new pet? And at this point in my career, I became very stable. I have a terminal degree. I like am trying to seek lots of creative routes to use a PhD within like a public academic setting, not within universities. And I was like, there could be some fun ways to creatively Mm. use a therapy dog. And when I was a kid, like I know I went to hospitals and I did like the reading with Rover programs. And so I was like, I'm not quite sure exactly what to do, but I can look into it and try and find ways that she'll fit into my practice and also new things that we both can do, new things that she she can do. And so it was really interesting and exciting to learn. Yeah, that's really great. So when you got Seppi, you were looking for a therapy dog. Yeah. And so before I got her, like when I had chosen the breed I was going to get and the breeder that I went with actually like mostly breeds dogs in order to give away to veterans to train as service dogs. And so the ones that she sells just kind of supplement being able to give for free. So they knew that they had good temperaments. Every dog that was bred from her, if they go through any program, they pass the program. So I felt pretty confident in that. But I met with an organization in Las Vegas to train with. So I had my interview a week after I got Seppi. She had a temperament test. And so the ball was rolling right away of as soon as she was vaccinated and, you know, able to get started, we were planning on getting started. Okay. What specifically were you looking for in her when you were looking for a therapy dog? I was mostly looking for a pretty mellow temperament. Like I wanted a dog that you know, had their own personality, but was very interested in people, which I knew you couldn't guarantee any of that from a puppy. And so I just kind of had hopes and knew what I was looking for when I saw pictures and got videos. And she definitely is a good fit for a therapy dog. She loves people. She loves children in particular. Like she watches screens a lot. And so if I'm watching a video and like a child comes on, she will stop playing and she will just stare at the TV until the kid is off the screen. And so we definitely have a good fit. She just has to learn 
learned how to calm down a little bit with her excitement around people, but she definitely loves it. And so she has a temperament that will be good for the job once she is able to grow up a little bit. And how old is she right now? She's 13 months. Yes, yeah, she was born November 24th, 2021. Okay. Did I see that she just passed her CGC or did I make that up in my head? She did, yeah. <laughs> passed okay. it in December of last year. Okay, very cool. And I was thinking that I saw that like shortly after you reached out, but I yeah. couldn't remember for certain. Yeah, it was actually so. funny because we were training that day with our training organization. And then at the end of it, they were like, okay, we're going to get the certificates because like we were testing for this. And I was like, I didn't even realize we were testing for it today, but okay. That kind of happened to us too, because we yeah. showed up for our um, obedience class and we were the only ones signed up that day. Uh -huh. And so they're like, we're just going to go through this as if it's your test. And if you pass, you pass. And if not, we consider it practice. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Steffi sometimes will meet up like when we have our individual training, like sometimes other dogs will join because there are a few other therapy dogs, as well as just other puppies that, you know, they can work well together. And so there's another dog that was interested in potentially doing a therapy dog program. So they had both Steffi and that dog paired. And I guess they were in their minds going to try testing them both and then both passed. So <laughs> that's how that worked. That's awesome. Well, congrats on passing. That's huge. That can be so hard just passing CGC. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very proud of her. She does really well. She is a stubborn girl. And so sometimes there are power struggles where like she knows exactly what she should do. She just doesn't want to quit. And so very glad that she knows how to behave and will do it enough. Yeah. Jared said those are always great CGC tests after the obedience class. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know he's getting ready to do CGC with Bree soon so awesome yeah I think that it was really good that I started with the intentionality for her because I think that a lot of things that I didn't totally realize would be important until they became important were mm -hmm. so beneficial like I started her immediately like I was very focused on like making sure that she had good confidence when she was a puppy and so I obviously like played with her and I took care of her but like if she had scary incidents or things that she might find scary I tried not to like rush in and coddle yeah. I also was like very thorough with a routine and so she has always been really good like she'll wake up well she'll go to bed well she doesn't really bark she lets me know when she needs different things but she also like doesn't ask for a ton and doesn't have issues when like things should be scary yeah. or are she's able to kind of like self-soothe and work through it which I think if I didn't know to like do that in the beginning it would have been hard to like train that back in after she was a puppy you know yeah, it's definitely helpful when you know what you're training for from the beginning yeah <laughs> I'm a strong proponent of you can teach an old dog new tricks but it's helpful if they don't need to unlearn something <laughs> first <laughs> yeah my last time Rory, I adopted him when he was like nine. And so he learned a lot of good things later in life. But I don't think he would have been able to learn the things necessary in order to make him good for being like a therapy dog or anything like that, or to want to do that. Yeah. And so some of the things with Seppi is, you know, things that she just came with. And I was lucky that her temperament and her personality work for this. Yeah. But also, again, making sure that I was like, really thoughtful about how I did it, I think has helped a lot. Yeah, I really think that if the desire is there you can get there it may take longer than some but the desire is the one thing you can't really teach them you can teach them how to be more comfortable around people but the desire has to be there at their core so yeah i have to talk to my trainer about this a little because she was like yeah she would not be a good service dog and so it's good that like wasn't your point because like she just does not have that like she is very people oriented and so a lot of that is just you know kind of luck based you can do as much as you can to try and figure out temperament before you get a dog but until you get to know them more until they get to explore the world you don't really know and their personalities aren't really solidified until they're like two either so yeah sometimes i'm talking to her like working with her and i'm like i don't really know what you need like she's sometimes an adult and she's like in that teenager phase where sometimes i see like who she is and other times i just feel like i'm just meeting needs and mm -hmm. i'm going to get to know her soon and so yeah having a puppy i haven't raised a puppy in a very very long time because i've just adopted senior dogs and so it's a very different experience yeah they have a lot of energy it makes like fun though because they just have such joy usually yeah love so many things it's really funny too like the way her mind thinks about things like i took her on a vacation like a month after she was vaccinated and we drove to san diego and we were waiting outside like a restaurant and she heard like seagulls above and she for whatever reason in her mind like assumed that they came from the sidewalk and yeah. so she aired intently at a point in the sidewalk for like minutes and i was like <laughs> why do you think that like they're from the sidewalk? 
Happy birthday. Jared's really curious what kind of socialization you've incorporated for her. For example, going to stores, parks, etc. to learn more about her temperament. Yeah. So before she was vaccinated, I bought like a stroller and I brought her like into Lowe's. I just kind of took her on a walk. I tried to purposely take walks that were like near heavy traffic areas at some times. I also tried to take walks where I knew people would be around, but like not close enough for them to try and pet her. I brought her to the grocery store a few times in the stroller. And so I tried to to be very intentional about different places to go and also making sure that like I did it because I think that that was like the hardest part because she could have just stayed by herself and then also with that every time I try to do a socialization thing I also tried to make sure that she was like left alone and so I had a puppy camera and it's like I tried to make sure that I left by myself and so like she went as many times with me on an errand as well as not with me on an errand and then once she was fully vaccinated and able to go out into the world I brought her to daycare pretty quickly I also started bringing her to my office space in order for her to get comfortable in the office, get used to how therapy offices work in general, like when there are noises. And it's funny to see how she learned that too. She like understands when doors open and close and like different things about like those noises. But there was one time where a family of children knocked on the wall from the waiting room that like connects to our office. And she understood like that's not a door. And so like, why is there knocking? So then she barked at that. But if like a knock on the door will happen, she's like, that's a door. That's so cute. What kind of specialized training, if any, are you and Seppi doing in order for her to join you in counseling? So for right now, we work with an organization in Las Vegas called Michael's Angel Paws, and we've worked with them since I got her. And so we did one round of obedience class, like in a group, but mostly we have to do individual training. And so right now, a lot of it is focused on the stuff for like the good canine citizenship test and basic obedience, like getting her to have good loose leash walking, sitting, again, impulse control is like huge for her. And then we are starting now that she passed the Canada decision to slowly incorporate like things that will be useful for like animal assisted interventions. And so being able to know how to greet people, how to like put pressure on laps and things like that. And so slowly over time, the hope is to like teach her more and more of that as she will get closer to hopefully seeing people in person. So at this point, I still do only telehealth. And so trying to time it for her to like not learn a skill and then like unlearn it, she's not using it, but like learning it in the appropriate course of time and you know, gradually. Yeah, for sure. That makes total sense. What do you think that she'll really enjoy about doing therapy with you? I think that she's definitely going to enjoy seeing people. I think that it will also be good for her. Like she's very on off, I feel like. So I can tell when we're at home, she doesn't really understand how to play well. She doesn't really want to go on walks. Like she has a lot of need for engagement. But like when we're at home, she's just like, I don't really know what to do here. And so I think it'll be good for her to like have the socialization of, you know, I I'm with people, but I'm also like just kind of chilling on the couch with people because I think it will fit her. It's also really funny to think about because my last dog, Rory, was like a truly introverted dog. You could tell when he was like performing when people were there and then like when he was alone, he would like thrive. And Seppi is the total opposite. And so I feel like she doesn't quite know how to dog well by herself, but she knows how to like people watch. She's really engaged. She'll be on for hours. Like if we are with people, like she will be active and be engaged for however long we're there. There. So I think that she'll really enjoy and like do well with that kind of environment. That's really great. I love that. What are you looking forward to about having her join you in work? I think that one thing that they don't teach you about careers is once you get established, you know, I had a terminal degree, I had a very solid practice. I was like, what do I do now? Because it was just a lot of the same. And so I was like, I don't really want to do a lot of the same for decades. And so I'm interested in like being surprised by things. I've been trying to, again, like think pretty creatively about like the things that I do and like how she can be incorporated with it. With it. I think in particular, I'm going to be interested to see how she will affect the trainings that I do and kind of the training of clinicians. Because one of the things that I do the most is I work on very sensitive areas where people can be really defensive. They cannot know, you know, things right away. So there's a lot of like ignorance to knowing how to work with trans folk, potentially some biases that they have to work through. And so I think that it will be interesting to see how a puppy being there can like hopefully open them up to if they do have to unlearn something, if they do you have to deal with kind of that discomfort being able to be soothed during that process. I think there's going to be a lot of ways that she will surprise me and like the process will be changed by her just being there and there being a dog in the room. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I know Barb had a question about that too. It's just how you plan to incorporate her in your trainings. 
Yeah, I think a lot of what I have found over the years, I got my PhD in 2018. And I at first was going to pursue academia, but then I realized I did not want to do that. And so since that point, it has been the continual process for myself of learning that there is no roadmap of like what this looks like and how to do it. And so a lot of it is just trying things, throwing things at the wall and seeing if they stick, using strong suits that I know I have and seeing what pulls up. And so from that, I'm kind of hoping to do the same with CEPI being included. I have started having more deep relationships with like particular inpatient hospitals in town that host trainings of mine. I can create new trainings at any time. And so I think that trying to figure out what works. Does she work with every training? Is there particular trainings? There are some times where like different organizations want me to come a little bit for like corrective behavior. And so like, is she good for that? As well as like I said, you know, we have a lot of days off. And so doing her own things, I'd really love and I think it'd be really fun to get her into like the Reading with Rover. We still live near my childhood library where I did that program. And so through training her, I think that I've had to learn how to be very open to ideas changing, like what my idea of a therapy dog is it's not what's going to happen. My idea of what will and won't work won't necessarily happen. And so I want to see what she enjoys, where she fits in well, where she finds her own way to make something work, where I try and make something work and then realize it doesn't work and try something else. So I think we're both trying to just be flexible and listen to each other with this in order to see how to help people stay engaged, help people be interested in learning. That's kind of my main goal with her through trainings and everything like that. Okay, so you are wanting to volunteer with her too. Yeah, which is a very different process. I think that part of how I found you and found other things is it was very difficult. There was a big gap that I was noticing when I was at first looking into it of there were therapy dog teams for viability purposes and how to find things that were purely volunteer, but there weren't things for professionals. But yet I knew that there was animal assisted interventions. And so trying to figure out all of that math and how to calculate <laughs> it and both has been a challenge. Yeah. But I'm hopeful that it has seemed through the last year with her that it is becoming more and more resources available. Mm -hmm. And I'm also hoping that for therapists in general, I know that I work in an office and I've also been in other offices where like things are pretty open for therapists. Like you can just bring your pet. And I hope that more people will like be intentional and not just be like, I'm going to bring my personal dog to work, but mm -hmm. that they are trained, making sure that they are useful. I think that there are ways in which like that is a nice benefit of the job where you can do that with certain pets, but not just making your pet be a therapy dog because they are in the therapy office and hopefully that will help with kind of furthering more animal assisted interventions and things that they can really well be used for within client practices. Yeah, that's definitely a topic that I could geek out with you on for a little over an hour. So we'll have to connect again later. Yeah. That's kind of how I ended up in this conversation yeah. as well, is wanting to learn more. And I actually found there are so many different resources out there, but it just takes so many conversations to find them. Yeah. It's actually kind of exciting, the variety that's out there, but there's definitely so much room for more. Yeah, it's hard to access. And it's one of those things that kind of feels like an underground society, yeah. kind of like yeah. I started asking questions I was like on the surface, I had no idea where to look and it felt very isolating. So I was like, I know mm -hmm. this is the thing, but I can't figure out how it's a thing. Yeah. And then as I, you know, just kind of opened up my world and opened up my search terms, I started finding more and more of like, okay, like other people are doing this and there are ways yeah. to act. Yeah, it's one of those things where you don't even know what to search for at first to even know how to uncover it. And then when you do, they're just like, well, what do you mean you don't have this credential? And it's like, what do you mean this credential exists? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. but it, was, it was really difficult, too, because I feel like there's a lot of misunderstandings about like how therapy dog training works. And so I've always cared about like, you know, service dog training. Like I always figured, you know, in another world, another lifetime training, you know, guide dogs training service dogs, like it's something that I was always interested in, but I didn't pursue. And I didn't really know much. I knew that there was a lot of science to it, but I didn't know much of the science to it. So I was excited to learn that new skill. But I was really, really cautious to make sure that like when I brought Seppi to be socialized, to work on all these different things that I was doing so intentionally and not in any way impacting like service dog teams and also mm -hmm. helping people in my personal life understand the difference between a therapy dog, a service dog, an ESA, and all those different components have been a challenge. <laughs> Yeah, you end up educating so many people in your own life. And also, once they find out that your dog is trained to be a therapy dog, they think they can just like pile on them every time they see them. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah, she's just so cute and she's so soft and fluffy. And so everyone just wants to pet her. And so I have yeah. lots of tasks 
people out there that say like ask to pet and like what she needs to do because like I want her to meet people but like she has to have her paws on the ground she has to work on the impulse control and like so many people just feel entitled to pet a dog (laughs) and so it's so difficult to like train the humans more than the dogs like Seppi will try to like be calm but then someone will approach her and then she'll look at me after and be like I didn't do that right like I know that I shouldn't have jumped and I'm like yeah it was their fault they did this yeah definitely and even just the fact that like most people don't know the difference in how dogs like to be greeted there's a big difference and it's really important when you're training a therapy dog to protect those positive experiences with humans so that they don't create like a negative association yeah it's very conscientious of that for her and again it's been trying to make sure that like she has access to things and people and experiences in ways that you know are safe risk to take so like you know if she goes to daycare like I said in order to meet dogs we meet dogs personally but like we're not going to dog parks you know we're not going to places where I feel like I don't know what kind of other dogs are there and if I feel hesitant around any person I know with a dog then I say like she can't be greeted or she can't be pet so trying to make sure that she is safe always and has positive experiences or like learning experiences but never anything that's like putting her in danger or un- safe yeah i know we're coming up on the end of our time here real quick do you have any advice for someone who's wanting to get into this area I think that before I would have started, I would have said a lot of things about like how to learn practices, how to like read up on books. But I think since I've been through this process more, the thing that I've found that is most important is I have to remember to like stay very present with her and like work on our communication, our connection. And she's a dog and I'm a person and our self-care is very important to that. Like every time I've tried to just check a list of, you know, this is the things that you should do. This is the socialized stuff. It has hurt us because it makes me not want to go out with her it makes me feel tired from it and so trying to be gentle with both her and myself through the process has been really helpful right now we're in a lot of trying to work on like precision of her skills so it's a lot more like mentally taxing for me to do and so it makes me not want to do big things that I label training so trying to have fun moments like watch her play by herself watch myself go walk with her in order to remember why I'm doing it and that we both are there for each other regardless of if we are there for other people and not lose sight of that. I love that. I love that so much. That bond is so important. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Sarah, if people want to follow your journey, the best way to do so is at Dr. Seppi, S-E-P-I underscore paw H-D, yeah. right? Yeah, so that is Seppi Therapy Dog training account. I am trying to be good. I'm not good with Instagram and social media stuff, <laughs> but I'm trying to find things that she's learning, some helpful tips. I do not know training very well, but things that I learned from our trainer and also experiences that she has to let people follow along on that journey. I love that. Thank you so much. It was really nice to meet you, Sarah. Thank you for sharing today. It was nice to meet you as well. Take care. Take care.